Almost two years ago, I uploaded this video titled, Can This Wooden Hand Make Me Amazing at Drawing? Now back then, I sucked at YouTube. I mean, maybe I still do, but like, I really sucked back then. So much so that I didn't even pay attention to the views that my videos got. So unbeknownst to me, for like the first year of that video's existence, it was my first video to ever cross 100 views. And today, it has almost 400 views, which is quite a lot for my channel size. So in this video, I'll be one-upping myself. I will not just be using that wooden mannequin, which I still have, by the way, right here. I will not just be using this hand, I'll be using a full body wooden mannequin in today's video to see if it can do two things for me. A, if it can get me better at drawing human anatomy, and two, if it can get this video to a million views. <laughs> or just, just more than 400. So, step one, I gotta buy the wooden mannequin. Okay, we're going into Blick, because it's my favorite. This is me awkwardly walking around the store with my brother helplessly looking for a wooden mannequin while holding an iPhone camera up to my face. So eventually I just gave in and asked an employee. Excuse me, do you guys have any like wooden mannequins? They do. So I got one, purchased it, among some other things, and got out of that situation. So I got a bunch of stuff. But what we really care about is this boy right here. Isn't that right, Peter? Oh, yes, sir. I'm gonna take this guy back home and we can draw there. Here he is. So really quick, before we get started putting him into the experiment, I think we need to give this guy a personality. I think I broke, I think I broke his arm. We're, we're gonna give him a personality. So I just thought before he goes through the experiment, we need to be able to relate to him on a personal level. So I did two things to make this happen. The first thing was giving him this adorable face. Yes! Look at him. Now I just need a name. Now that's the perfect segue into the second thing I did, which was giving him a name. Now to do this, obviously I went to the Googles as usual, and I searched probably one of the weirdest Google searches I have ever made, being what should my wooden friend's name be? <laughs> now as to be expected, Google really didn't know what to do with this, so they gave me whatever this is. Okay, I don't even know what I'm looking at, and all these names suck, so I am going to go with my gut on this one. So as I sat there and I gazed into my wooden friend's beautiful eyes, I remember the first moment that we met, and in that moment, the perfect name came to me. Really, there's no tension to build up here because you guys already know what his name is. I mean, you, you saw the thumbnail and title. His name is Bob. Bob, Bob is what I'm going, his name, he's Bob, Bob, say hi to Bob. So now that we all have a deeply personal and meaningful relationship with Bob, we can begin putting him into the experiment. I, I guess that's what I'm calling it now. So as the first stage of the experiments, I decided to do something very easy for Bob, which is just drawing him from a straightforward point of view, nothing complicated, and this was actually quite an enjoyable experience, except for the fact that I had to go through so much pain to get this clean looking POV shot for you guys. It, I mean, I, I can't even really explain why it was so hard, but I just had to like be in the most uncomfortable standing position the entire time I was drawing this. <laughs> Please drop a like down below because your boy is putting in the work. But all that aside, from a purely drawing point of view, this was a very nice experience, but we'll have to see how Bob does in the next stages of the experiment. And also, don't worry, I did give Bob some pants because we want to keep this family friendly, of course. So aside from how horrible it was to stand in that position, this was actually quite a nice drawing experience. Experience. I got to really just turn off my brain and look at Bob. And so far, this is something that I would actually use if I was struggling to draw a person. But obviously that was just the first stage of the experiment and it was very simple. We're gonna get a little more complex now. So for stage two of the experiment, Bob is getting a photo shoot, yes. So basically my plan is to take all these photos of Bob at extreme angles and see if he can help me draw the human figure at these angles, which is actually something that I struggle with. So I'm really hoping that Bob actually can help me here. And help me, he did. This was just another experience where I got to completely turn off my brain and just look at the pictures of Bob. As I said, this is something that I usually struggle with, but using Bob like this, it felt pretty easy and I got pretty good results as well, especially considering that these are just sketches. Of course, I gave him pants every time. So this test was actually a lot more helpful than the first one we did, even though that one was helpful too, but this is like actually something that I would want to use going into the future. I just got to look at the reference that I had from our boy, Bob, who is definitely scoring points right now. 
It was at this point that I realized Bob probably should have a point system, so this is the one I gave him. It's very simple, but basically how it works, every time Bob goes through a stage of the experiment and I like what he did, he gets a point on the positive side. If not, he gets a point on the negative side. So right now, Bob has two positive points and zero negatives, so let's hope that these next three stages are good for Bob so I don't have to kill him. But before you think he's getting out of the experiment without a scratch on him, we're about to test what I think is probably his weakest point, which is his flexibility. So what I mean by that is for this next stage, I'll be putting Bob into different kind of shapes as you see me doing here and seeing if he can accurately fit those shapes. So I started off with something easy like a running pose. So this one was pretty easy, I actually originally forgot to give him pants, but he did get some pants later on. But yeah, this pose obviously wasn't too hard for Bob, and then the next one should have been harder, but for some reason I made it something probably even easier. It was this shooting a basketball pose. Okay, so they both have pants now, but for the last position that I put Bob in, to say he was unable to do it would be an understatement. Just as a reference, this is me, an actual human, doing the position that I was going for. As you can see, it's not that complex, but this was the best that Bob could do. So that was very disappointing. I mean, it's not really worth it unless you actually know how to shape him into like a character running or whatever. Even if you do at that point, like it would just take too long. You can just Google a picture of someone running. Whereas for those pictures of those angles I was taking, that's actually very helpful because you can get the exact angle that you want to draw your character at. Whereas with this, as I said, you just Google it at that point, and as we saw, he's not very flexible. So that is definitely one tally on the negative side and two on the positive side. Now in the previous stage, stage 3, I put Bob in some pretty basic drawing positions, but for stage 4 I decided to try something that frankly makes no sense. I don't know why you would ever draw this, but I want to know that Bob can go above and beyond the requirements. Apparently I cannot, but I want to know that Bob can. And well, he just can't. I mean, this is what I was going for, this is what Bob could do. Again, proving to us that he is not flexible. So if Bob continues like this into the last stage of the experiment, well, I can see this not ending so well for Bob. I don't even think I need to draw this one. I mean, he, he just can't do it. I mean, I am certainly not the most flexible individual. The fact that I am light years more flexible than Bob is not at all a good sign. You guessed it, that is one tally on the negative side, which leaves us with a tie. Now all we can do is a tie breaker. And I honestly don't even know what to expect from this one. So just to make sure we're all clear going into this final stage of the experiment, when I said previously that I would kill Bob, I really meant that his life is on the line here. And uh, I have this window in my room, and I'm on the second story of my house, so that's about roughly a 20 foot drop. I don't know how to estimate these things. So I think using this visual Bob's possible fate is uh, pretty strongly implied. However, it is not all doom and gloom for Bob. I mean, after all, we are in the tiebreaker. So what is the tiebreaker, you may ask? Well, I'm glad you asked. So as a throwback to the wooden hand video, at the end of that video, I tried putting a pencil inside of the wooden hand, as you can see, and I tried drawing a hand with the wooden hand. It was very goofy. So for Bob, I decided to do something very similar by taping a pencil into his uh, hands, I guess, and seeing if he can draw a human body. Making the decision on my own was almost too hard, so I decided to call a friend to get a second opinion, and for whatever reason the audio didn't record here, so you're just gonna have to trust me, but basically I showed him the picture that Bob drew and asked him to rank it on a scale of 1 to 10, and he said 6. He, he definitely said 6. And I think you should know that guy that I called has no idea who Bob is or the fact that his life is on the line, so I think he just genuinely rated it a 6. However, that's his rating, taking that into consideration, and Taking everything into consideration, it's time for me to say my final choice. My final decision is... You know what? Screw it. Yeah, just, just screw the experiment. I mean, this is just stupid.
stupid. I mean, yeah, the picture sucks. You know, he's not the most talented uh, little, little wooden guy, but he was always happy to do all the, the crazy things I put him through. And he always had a smile on his face the whole time. So I guess the moral of this story is, uh, uh don't kill people. <laughs> and also click the link that's like somewhere over here because we need to get the video to 100 views. Bob would be proud of you.